Hello, and welcome to the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investors Investor Services or Archer Daniels Midland. Today's panelists are Steve Freed, our Vice President of Grain Research, and Alan Bush, our Senior Financial Economist. Let's start with Steve. Steve, grain futures started higher last week after the USDA crop report, but have since traded lower. Why, and will this continue? I think there were a couple of things. I think number one is that uh, we looked at world prices and for corn, uh, Ukraine, Brazil, Argentina are all cheaper uh, than U.S., so we could see our final U.S. corn exports lower. Um, I think that the beans in South America, meal and oil is cheaper than U.S., so we could see the bean exports lower. China's not buying as much beans because of their economy. And then Russian wheat is cheaper than U.S. wheat. We also have a feeling amongst um, farmers, crop surveyors, that the soybean, final soybean crop will actually be bigger than what the USDA. And the second thing is just the market is just watching the Fed uh, increasing rates this week. Uh, that's been bullish to the dollar and bearish to a lot of commodities, bearish the stock market, and grains are, are also uh, negative. Um, what is the latest update on world weather and the impact to prices? I think that uh, for the most part, we're starting to see rains in Europe, which is negative. Uh, we're seeing good Brazil weather, some showers in Argentina, which is negative. Um, and we should have an open harvest for corn uh, for the next 30 days, which is, I think, negative. We then, um, we're still dry in central China. Uh, and because of that dryness, they've reduced their industrial production, uh, which is probably negative. Uh, to their imports, and um, and finally, the Southern Plains is going to be dry, but it doesn't seem like that is a big enough factor to help wheat futures. And um, in your opinion, Steve, what is the latest technical signals in the grains and the net funds positions? It's interesting in that uh, the funds uh, are adding a little bit to the bean numbers. Um, and beans have bounced off some important uh, support areas uh, around the 1435 area. And we're higher today as we're seeing people liquidate out of uh, long corn short bean positions. Uh, we still think that the market could test 1350 as a harvest low, and $15 should be strong resistance. Over in the corn market, um, a very uh, choppy trade. Uh, we've had a rally that has extended from mid-July lows to $7 after the report. We backed off a little bit, but we are holding the 200-day moving average today um, at the 668 area. So um, some people think we're going to kind of trade in a $6, $7 range through harvest and maybe test $6 as a harvest low. The wheat market's been all over the map. We had a rally from a low uh, around 7.45 up to uh, the 8.84 area, and we're backing off now, testing uh, support at today's low at 8.20. So um, wheat market has been in the sideways trading range with about 7.80 to 8.50 as the range, and I think that's going to continue. Funds are not as big of longs as normal. And um, so that suggests that they just don't want to play alongside of grains because of the recession. All right, Steve, thank you. Moving over to Alan, what is the outlook for the U.S. dollar? So I think the dollar will remain strong. Recently, it did make some 20-year highs, and we're really not that far from, from those levels now. But with the Fed as hawkish as it is, in fact, more hawkish than other central banks, I think the dollar index will be continue to be supported and move higher in advance of the Wednesday statement from the FOMC, where they are likely to raise rates by 75 basis points with a, a small chance of a 100 basis point hike. So the dollar index will probably remain firm in advance of that meeting. I think I uh, might lighten up a bit uh, 
just before the statement, but between now and then, I would expect the dollar to continue to advance. Okay. And uh, what is the main trend for industrial commodities? So we are seeing the yield curve uh, continuing to invert. In fact, it's becoming even more inverted. That is a sign of economic weakness on the horizon. Uh, if that is correct, which I think it is, that would suggest that the industrial commodity prices will probably all continue to decline overall. That would include uh, crude oil, gasoline, maybe not natural gas, since there are some political overtones there. Uh, but copper, I think, will work lower from here, and also lumber futures will probably continue to come under pressure. And finally, Alan, what is your outlook for the stock index futures this week? So the stock index futures have come under pressure, of course, with the Fed being the dominant influence, the dominant negative influence. But I think once we get the rate hike out of the way on Wednesday, whether it's 75 basis points or 100, of course, most likely 75 basis points, I think once that meeting is out of the way, traders might start looking to the possibility of weaker economic reports, maybe a less hawkish Fed. So after the Fed meeting is out of the way, I think we will see some type of bounce, some type of recovery in stock index futures. All right. Well, thank you both. Remember, the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. If you would like more information about our brokerage services, please visit ADMIS.com. Thank you.